Can everybody hear me okay? It's, it's really an honor to be here. Um, I do quite a bit of speaking on the subject of explanation, of helping people, un helping people understand how to make things easy to understand. Uh, but this is a different kind of talk. This is about, this is really takes to heart this idea of minimal, because minimal really drives a lot of what we do and how we think about our business at Common Craft. So this is really the Common Craft story. Uh, Common Craft really started uh, with an epiphany that I had in 2004, about 10 years ago. I was at a conference in Silicon Valley, and there was a CEO speaking about current trends on the web. And he mentioned RSS, you know, you know, the really simple syndication that allows us to subscribe to websites now. And he said some words that I'll never forget. He said, RSS is an XML-based content syndication format. <laughs> and, it, and everybody in the room was like, what is he talking about? I have no idea what that means. And, but if you look at what he said, it was accurate and succinct and probably sounded pretty good to him. But uh, that's when I had this epiphany that RSS was, this was 10 years ago, so it was part of the, this family of technology that's now like social media. You know, we have blogs and wikis and social networking. And at the time, they weren't being adopted. Like, they were still pretty new. And, and I was fascinated with those tools. I had been an online community manager, and I really wanted people to adopt them. And the, the epiphany was that maybe it wasn't the normal things that were keeping people from adopting these tools. It wasn't things like price or access. They were free on the web and what might not have been design or engineering, that the really core problem might have been just communication and specifically explanation that, that nobody was able to present and communicate these new tools in a way that people could understand and make them care about it. So that was the first time I thought that there's such a thing as an explanation problem. And that's really what I wanted to do was to solve explanation problems and to help people, you know, start to care about these new tools. So that's really what sort of drove this idea of explanation and common craft. And we, that went on for a couple of years, but then a couple of really big things happened. Um, in 2005, YouTube came out. It became really popular in 2006. And we were trying to figure out what common craft was going to, what we we're going to do with common craft then. Um, and then in 2007, Sachi joined the company. Sachi's here in the audience. She's, she stays in the background of Common Craft, but she is at the heart of everything we do. She's, a lot of our best ideas come from Sachi. And we decided that let's make videos and put them on YouTube, uh, like everybody thought in 2006, probably. Um, so we decided we were going to make videos. Uh, so that started with me hanging a whiteboard on a wall and setting up a tripod and trying to be the guy looking at the camera and writing on the board at the same time and it felt like a huge nerd and got really frustrated. And Sachi, always the problem solver, said, why don't we do something different? Let's take the, the whiteboard and put it on the floor and then point ca a camera down onto the whiteboard and move, like, move pieces of paper around and, and tell the story that way. And I thought it was brilliant. So that's, that's what we did. And uh, in April of 2007, we published our first video in this way called RSS in Plain English. We had no idea what would happen, and we really had no idea what we were doing. We had no background in any kind of creative work, really, um, especially video production. <laughs> the video looks, you know, technically pretty horrible, but it worked. People loved it. It was a viral hit at the time in those early days uh, of YouTube, and it, that was the first time we thought, like, whoa, this, this, this could work. Something's happening here. Um, so I'll give you a look at like, this is the, an early version of what our studio looked like. This is like the second, you can see a bedroom lamp on the floor there. Like um, really this is a shop depot, uh, Home Depot shop lights that we're lighting it with. Um, and this is actually our current sound room. Um, you can see there's clamps and an actual shower curtain with a, uh, with a quilt on it with, with <laughs> towels and stuff. Actually, I, I'm in there today. Um, so we're, we're a very DIY operation. Um, so the, the first videos came from that kind of setup. Um, so I want to show you just a, a reel of just a, a few videos that might, might flip a switch for you if you've seen a Common Craft video. Welcome to RSS in plain English. Every time you look for something new and it's not there, you've wasted valuable time. This is the old way. Welcome to wikis in plain English. These four friends are going on a camping trip. They need to bring the right supplies because they're backpacking. Using a wiki, the group can coordinate their trip better. This is the new way. Yay! <laughs> Real life happens between blog posts and emails. And now, there's a way to share. 
This is Twitter in plain English. Files saved on one computer can now be available on all your computers and phones automatically. This is the big idea behind Dropbox. So those, those four videos are responsible for tens of millions of views. And, and the early ones especially are, are known for sort of getting the explainer video movement started uh, back in, in 2007. And we're still making videos. Our videos don't look, look much different than the Dropbox video here. And we'll talk a little bit about that one a little bit later. So we continued making videos for the first year or so. And these are all videos that we weren't hired to make. We just thought they needed to, to exist in the world and put them on YouTube, and it, and it was great. But it didn't uh, necessarily uh, present any opportunities that we, we, we could realize at the time. So at the time, we said, like, this is sort of the viral video phase in 2007. And you know, our income was pretty low. Uh, we weren't making money from them really at all for a while. And our happiness was moderate at that time. <laughs> so we'll see where that goes. Um, so it was about this time that we started to think about what we were really doing. Like what is a Common Craft video and, and why is it working? And, and if, it, if we can figure out why it's working, can we learn to replicate it? So that made us think about like, well, you know, what, what, what is this all about? And we realized that Common Craft videos are, have an opportunity of being a very constrained thing, that we can apply constraints to the video that help us define what it is. And if we can define it, then it can be a standard that we use to, to, for, to have the videos become part of like our brand identity and something we can point to and say, that's what we do. So some things that we saw is they, they don't have music. You know, I, I hum a little bit in a couple of them. Um, <laughs> they're about three minutes or less. Um, they use stop motion, live action animation. Uh, they use human hands, which is kind of an interesting thing that it means they can't be digital very easily. Um, it has my voiceover and, and my, uh, my hand-drawn artwork that we call cutouts. So these became sort of our, our constraints. Like, it's not a Common Craft video to us unless it, it does these things. Another, another point that's on here is like we focus a lot on the script, that the script, the script writing is really the heart of, of what we do on, on that side of, of the, creative, uh, the creativity. And then regarding our cutouts, the, the artwork, there's constraints there too. There are, they don't have no faces, no hands, and they have imperfections that, that are, they kind of give them a hand, a hand, that hand-drawn kind of feel. So we kind of figured out that when we answer the question, what is a Common Craft video, it's really a set of constraints. It's a set of rules that we apply to it to make it something that we are, we are sort of in control in, that we can manage and make a thing, like a product. So once we, once we got to this point, then we started to see the potential for maybe these videos becoming a business. Like what, what could Common Craft videos actually become? Uh, so we put a little thing on our website that said, hey, you know, it, we can make this for your company. And within about a few months of making videos, we were contacted by Google to make a video called Google Docs in plain English. And we, were just, we, we certainly saw ourselves as just this, these two people who got lucky making these weird videos, and now Google wants us to make a video for Google Docs. It, it totally blew us away. Um, but that was the start of sort of realizing that, oh, this Common Craft video thing could actually become our job. It could actually give us income. Um, so this video got made, and then a little while later, we made a video for our library that was not something that we were hired to do called Twitter in Plain English that was in the reel. And I sent a note to Biz Stone at Twitter and said, hey, we made this video, what do you think? And we made a handshake deal, and with a few within a few weeks, and this was in 2008, a button appeared on Twitter.com that said, watch a video. And when you click the button, this pop-up came up that said, thanks to our friends at Common Craft, with a link to our website. So suddenly, we were getting huge traffic from Twitter uh, coming to Common Craft. And uh, again, we sort of just felt like we just got lucky, and what do we do with this situation? Like, how do we deal with with um, you know, the business side of this and our, our personal lives. Uh, it was a, a very exciting time. Um, you know, then the, next, the year after that, uh, we got hired to make the Dropbox video. And that lived on the Dropbox homepage for over three years. And, and again, sort of raised our visibility even more. And, and the Common Craft name got to be known a little bit more, uh, especially in the, in the tech world. And what this meant was we had a lot of demand for our services. There were people that wanted to, we got you know, five emails a day from people that wanted to have a Common Craft video. And even if we had a big team, it, it would have been still overwhelming. So very, we got very lucky, and I think we were very excited at the time. And I think that uh, you know, in those early days, 
Our happiness went up and our income went way up, which is really great. <laughs> um, it was, again, a, a really kind of exciting time. But, you know, then we started to look at what we were really doing. And we could see that we were making two kinds of videos. That there are videos like, that we call the library videos. Those are videos like wikis in plain English that, that we made that we weren't hired to make. And they, they were 100% our vision of what this video should be. But then we were getting hired to make videos like the Dropbox video, uh, which we're very proud of. That's, um, that's not a, a bad example. But we realized that there was a little bit of a rift in how we were looking at the world and our business in terms of what we really felt the most comfortable doing and what we wanted to do the most. Um, on the custom side, it had a promotional element to it. And while there's nothing wrong with that, there's, it's, a, it's a great thing to do, um, we, we considered ourselves more of educators and really felt the most comfortable doing the videos that were about education and um, you know, were less promotional, that we could, we could actually uh, just educate people and explain things. And that was what was, was responsible for us getting to this level, was focusing on education more than product. And, and something else that sort of was this rift is, because we've constrained Common Craft videos to be such a specific thing, they're the, they're the same in every instance. So whether it's a custom video or a library video, the viewer has no idea. So when we're working with a company and they want to put some crazy script in there, you know, if, if we're hired to do it, we might have to do that. But then when somebody watches it, they think, oh, Common Craft videos have really gone downhill. And that, that, you know, and that's a hard thing to deal with because that's what we value the most is the script. So this this um, this rift between the custom and pro, the uh, the library videos and custom videos made us start to think differently. But at the time, the the income and the the demand was so great that the promotional videos and the, the custom videos is what we chose to do. And uh, and I think it was a, it was a good thing. But it wasn't long after that 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 we saw you know some some opportunities to do something different because what happened was. Our income went up, but we saw that our happiness started to go down. And, and for a two-person company working from home, that's a husband and wife team, if you're not happy, if you're not doing work that's happy, <laughs> that makes you happy, then nothing in your life is happy. <laughs> so, um, so this is a point where we realized, like, this is as exciting as this is and as much potential as there is here, we have to think about how we can protect our happiness. So that's when we started to think about what else was possible. You know, and we were lucky to have this, this demand for our services. So could, should we do consulting? Should we have a studio and hire a bunch of people to make, these, make more of these videos, new formats, infographics? And we had a lot of discussions about it. And it all ultimately came down to the answer to this question. Like, what if it works? If we choose to do an agency, if we choose to do consulting, or if we choose to do something else, what if it actually works? A year from now, five years from now, do we want to wake up every day thinking about that? and working with people that do that. And there's likely nothing wrong with that, but for me and Sachi personally, that was how we thought about that era of, of Common Craft, is what if it works? And it made us think too, like what is Common Craft? What, what do we want Common Craft to really be? And, and what kind of what business do we want to be in? What sort of work do we want to do? And it wasn't long before we realized that, like our videos, that, that Common Craft could be a set of constraints that we could think about Common Craft in terms of rules and define what we want Common Craft to be so we're in control of the opportunities and that we do the thing that, that really feels, feels the most natural to us and actually fits for us and would hopefully make us happy. So we, thought, we, we, we actually thought a lot about what those constraints might be. So Common Craft, since that time, and we always have been a two-person company. We've never had employees and we don't plan to have employees. We work with contractors, and that's been awesome. Uh, a couple of them are here. Thank you for being here. Um, and, and that's been a way that we, we get a lot of work done on our website. We're home-based. We have an office and a studio in our home that we use. We, we really are kind of homebody people. We love to be home. Like, that's our, that's our place. Um, and because we're two people and we're home-based, we actually have low overhead. We don't have a lot of costs that, that we have to worry about, especially if we have just a little bit of income. And with that being the case, it means that if we have a little bit more income, we can take risks because we're the only ones that bear the brunt of taking those risks. It's just us. And this allows us, too, to be independent. And that's something that's really important for us, I think, is to, to like I said before, sort of wake up thinking about your own problems and not somebody else's. Um, 
So that's, that's an important part for us. And, and hopefully through doing this, we can achieve the big thing that we want, which is actually to be happy and to be happy in our work and our career and hopefully uh, personally too. So the big question, of course, is how? Like, how do you do that? Like, what, what has to come together to be able to apply these sort of crazy constraints, which I totally realize are not really all that smart <laughs> in a lot of cases. Like, I don't think many business professors would tell you, oh, that's a really good idea. You should totally <laughs> do that. Um, but we started to see that there were some other opportunities that maybe we hadn't, hadn't considered as much. And I think part of that was by thinking in terms of constraints that it allowed, allowed us to see Common Craft from a different perspective. So we looked back at the different kinds of videos we were making. And we realized that we were still making this, these library videos. We were about one a month. So we had gotten up to 20 or 30 videos. And we thought that maybe there's a way that this can be our future, that somehow there's a way to build a business on these library videos in, ed in education. So that, was, that really became our focus. And around this time is when people started to contact us and, and say, hey, I love your videos. Can I use them on my intranet? Can I play them in my classroom? Can I put them um, in my training session or on my website? And we started to think like, oh, this is licensing. This is what they're asking for. People do this all the time. You know, that, that maybe video is not just a service you provide or is not just an advertisement, but is actually a product that you can actually make video. If video is useful and solves a problem, it can be a product. And that's not that much different than software. And software licensing, as anybody in Seattle knows with Microsoft, is a really good business. Um, but there's not a, video licensing is not as, as uh, mature like that, of course. But there was a, that we saw some opportunity for people to use Common Craft videos to solve a problem. And then if that's the case, we can provide them tools and services to make that easier. So that, that became the idea, was video licensing. We make, it, make, it, make a video once and potentially sell it to a lot more people or, or, or multiple times. <laughs> Um, of course, that's not, you know, that, that there's, there's problems with that. It's not that easy to do. Um, so the first problem is this idea of the short bet versus the long bet. And if you are making videos on a services basis, when someone hires you to make a video and you make a video, I, I call that like a short bet. You, you get hired, you make the video, hopefully you get paid. That's a short bet. You do a lot of those, that's your business, right? But with licensing, it's a long bet because you might make a video or five videos and publish them and not get paid for a long time. What you're betting on is that you can make enough of those videos and build a library big enough that there's enough value there that the licensing that will come from that entire library will pay you over time in the future. And that takes a long time to develop. It takes a long time to build the videos and the market and everything around it for that long bet to work. And we'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. And there's big opportunity costs there because being a two-person business, every minute we're working on a custom video on a short bet, it's time we're not working on our long bet. And that's sort of like this balance that we had to strike between what kind of videos are we making and, and how is it going to really do, accomplish the goal that we want to have in the future. And it, it was a mix for a long time. So we agreed that we would start to say no a lot more. So that meant when people came to us to, at, to hire us for a video, we would just say, I'm sorry, we're not available. And, and thankfully, we were able to create what we called the Common Craft Explainer Network, which, is, which was a directory of other explainer video producers that we could, uh, have, that we could point our leads at. <laughs> Some of them are here uh, today. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, so we started to say no. We had the explainer network. And then we had to think about how we allocated our time, because we had to be careful about that, that balance. So over time, this has happened over years, we slowly started to move from custom videos to library videos. And, and, and that sort of was a way for us to, to balance the income, where, where the, the, we're making enough custom videos to survive while the other thing was getting started. So this had probably a predictable outcome. <laughs> our, uh, our income took a hit. <laughs> And our, but our happiness started to go up. So we started to see the early phases of, OK, this is working, but this green line is really kind of scary. Um, are, we, are we OK with that? You know, is this OK? And we had to ask this question, like, will we are we willing to trade money for happiness? Is this, is, do we believe enough in this idea that we can make this long bet that's going to someday make us happy and then take a financial hit to get there? Because it's a bet. It's not a sure thing. So you really have to think hard about that risk. And we thought about it a lot. But 
um, we agreed that that's what we would do. And, and, and the way that that's worked in the last couple of years is we've moved into a membership sort of situation with Common Craft. So now Common Craft uh, does no cu custom work. Um, and all we have is a, a website that has a membership service. So educators and, and trainers and, and communicators become members of Common Craft, pay an annual fee to be a member of the website, and then, um, and then that, that is our business now, is simply us and the website. And, and in this situation, the business can scale without us having to change our, without bumping up too much against our constraints, because we don't, we don't have employees. If, if 1,000 people signed up tomorrow, well, maybe 1,000 would do it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the, the website is scalable in that way. Um, so we don't have employees, we don't have investors, and, and we don't have clients now. So this is like this sense of freedom that we were really looking for, and the sense of independence that, that Common Craft right now is really me and Sachi, and to some extent our dogs, and, uh, and our website, and our users, and, that's, and our members, and that's really what we want, and, and really what I think uh, is most, we're most passionate about is making our members happy, because that's really what all that Common Craft is today is us and our members. Now, I would love to be able to say, and now the green line went up and everything is great. <laughs> but it's really not, it's really not the case. Uh, that over, over this last few years, our, our income has continued to go down. Um, our, our happiness is up, and that's great. We're probably happier than we've ever been. But the fact is, replacing that custom video income was really hard. And we, ha we have to think differently. We had to scale back and think about a lot of things that we didn't think about before. So, Here's one way I look at it, is that, you know, this is sort of how, to, how I think about custom video revenue. It has, has peaks, these are each like, you know, big projects, let's say. And over time, we sort of intentionally said, no, 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 until that revenue was driven down <laughs> really far. And that's why that green line is going down. And as a small business, that's really scary to see that happening. We're doing that intentionally. Um, <laughs> but it's all because we really had this belief that we were building something else on the side that was gonna, that was gonna like, take something like our, what we call our like, lifestyle minimum and, and keep us from going too far below that because the other business would start to take off. So that, that, that green line going down was something that we saw as, as hopefully temporary. So if you look at that now, I think that we're, we're, still, we're still here, but you know, in 2014, let's say that um, the happiness, I think, is, is, is still high. And I personally have faith that start, like, even now that our, our, our income is still low, but you can see that there's a little slope there. The green line is sloping up ever so slightly. And, and, and my hope is that, that this long bet that we're making um, over years into the future will some, look something like this, where that green line will slowly move up because it's a really gradual process. It's not big peaks and valleys because it's just our membership. It's sort of a passive... Uh, kind, of, kind of business. So this is how we've optimized for happiness, is by taking a hit financially in order to look after the things that we felt were going to make us, make it work for us um, as people. So, so how, do we, how are we doing that? How do we plan to get that green line to go up a little bit more? Um, I wrote a book called The Art of Explanation. That's been good for membership because people become members to use our, our resources to become explainers. Um, something we've done in the last couple of years was started to license our cutouts, which is the artwork that appears in our, webs on, in, our in our videos. So now people can become a member of Common Craft and use what is essentially Common Craft clip art. So we have about 1,600 images that people can use that are all in the same style. Um, just yesterday, we released our first guide, and it was a soccer guide. So it's meant to explain the basics of soccer for the World Cup. <laughs> Um, so I, I hope you check it out. It's totally free. It's just a service we wanted to do. Um, and something that I think is kind of interesting about this is that uh, we, we're doing something new that I haven't seen, which is uh, we call them explainer gifts. But it's basically animated gifts that are not just dancing babies and cats and that kind of thing, but they actually explain something. They actually make an idea easy to understand in a GIF. Um, so that's what the soccer guide has is a bunch of those. Um, so I want to finish up with just a couple of points that I hope you'll take with us today, with, with you, is, is to think about the power of constraints. I think it's something that's really sort of paradoxically given us a lot of freedom because it, it helps us 
cut off some of the details that, that kind of cloud our vision and help us focus on something different. And when that, those details are cut away, the thing you're looking at becomes different. And I think constraints are a good way to do that. I think saying no is really, is really powerful. It's really hard. I mean, if you're, if, you're in, if you're in business, it's really hard to say, I'm sorry, we, we're not doing that now. But when you say no, it gives you power. It gives you power to be the master of your domain and to, to pursue the opportunities that you really want to do um, if those opportunities present themselves. And I hope that whether it's, it's in your personal life or whether it's in your home life, that, that you think about potential to op optimize for happiness and think about making conscious choices to be happy. Because at the end of the day, I think that's what really matters. And it doesn't have to be something that you do immediately. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. That you can make decisions now that might be like that green line that, that happen over time. And that you can have a mix of things going on in your life that maybe some is not so happy and some is happy. And you try to change that ratio to, to be more happy. And that, that's sort of what we've done. And I hope that's something that you'll take uh, from this today. So it happens gradually. So that's it. Thanks so much for having me.